Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Royalty, where we are recapping Traders U.S. Season 2. I am your host, Tiffany. <laughs> and I am your other host, Big D, a.k.a. Derek F. Look, I'm ready to... T- <laughs> Rainbow gangster. <laughs> Rainbow gangster over here, okay? <laughs> Ready to be traitors. Me and Tiffany, season fucking three. Call Let's us Peacock because we're going to be ready. My phone is right here. So, girl, so, we ready. Hey. They need to call us. It's time. We would, let me tell you something. <laughs> it would be iconic for me and you both to be on traitors at the same time. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know if they would know. But I would doing. hate if one of us have to be a traitor. I would not like that. Either we both had to be a traitor or we both had to be faithful. But if no, we're faithful, no. we're going to figure it no, out. No, that's not necessarily true. One of us can be the other. That way, if one of us is a traitor, we'll never let the other traitors kill us in our sleep. And if that one is of true. us is a faithful, we can convince the other faithful mm-hmm. that the other one's not a traitor. Why the fuck are we having this conversation? Yeah, actually, let's not talk about this. And on top so, of that, this kind of happens this episode. But anyway, scratch that. Okay. So, Tim, we get mm-hmm. into this third episode, okay? We yeah. leave off with Peppermint going home. Mm-hmm. Where are we at in this episode now? Well, this episode starts off with the traitors meeting. And... Parvati thinks that it's got to be Sandra or she named someone else. And she's like, she's trying to figure out who these traitors are going to be. Parvati's reaction is priceless. She has spent so much time with Dan, who has been implying the entire time that he is a faithful. She cannot believe that Dan and Phaedra are the traitors. And she looks at them and she's like, you guys have been doing a great job. And Phaedra's like, have we been doing a great job or a great job? Like, what kind of job? But the job that she had no idea that either one of them was actually a traitor. Right, yeah. And uh, she was shocked. But she was also excited. Because she's course. like, this is great. Yeah. And Dan did say that, you know, she's like the female version of him, mm-hmm. you know, and things like that. And I love that he was in her face trying to see if he if she could figure it out and the the reaction was priceless yeah. okay so what happens next to well one of the things that he does say about poverty is that she's really good at pulling people close to her pulling people in close to her and then cutting them um she has no problem with with letting them go with cutting people to get ahead so they they are similar in that regard so there's time they have to take the time to find who they're going to murder and Dan is being very strategic about who he wants to see go. Um, they mentioned Janelle, and it's interesting because he's promised Janelle that he'll work with her, uh, but her name comes up along with Deontay's name. And uh, they're just, you know, they're 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 throwing names out. Marcus's name comes up because yes. Mark, he, you know, Dan's Dan's afraid. That Marcus yep. may catch on that he's a traitor because he has a lot of influence over the house. Out. He has a lot of influence over the house. People trust and value his opinion, and he has already confronted Dan about not speaking up in discussions where everyone's had something to say except for you. So we will not know who they've murdered until breakfast. But now it's time for breakfast. So um, at breakfast. We're at the breakfast table. Everyone's coming in. Um, And as they come in, Peter makes an announcement about, you know, he's putting scenarios together about how traitors should or would go about choosing their victims and how he'd make it random and just, you know, so no one would be able to figure anything out. And, you know, Phaedra, Dan, they're just like, oh, all right. Phaedra's acting and th- Phaedra's being herself and that's what makes it beautiful. I love players that can be themselves and it just comes off just uh like mm-hmm. butter. Yeah. She's just She's smooth. I don't know who it might be. She's, She's smooth. very smooth. She's very smooth. She's smooth. Okay. I will hire her as my lawyer too. She's smooth. Okay. Um, the one thing that we do notice is that um is it Larson? Did I say that right? Larson? Yeah. Uh Larson is kind of like a little bit nervous because she was the first to walk in the room and she's like, You don't think they would give her to Marcus, do you? Right. Like, you know, she's very like, they're gonna give her to Marcus and um 
you know, as people start trickling in one by one, we still don't know what the decision yeah. is of who they picked. We and know who it was coming crazy down too, to. Because if you come in with someone, you know, we're all anticipating, if you're playing the game, you're all anticipating who is going to walk through the door. But if you actually have a person there, you're looking for that person to walk through the door. They're all wondering who's going to walk through the door. She actually is looking for someone specific to come through the door. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and um, it looks like they got him. They end up sending um, Marcus home. To his and death. Marcus is murdered. Death. He does not And come. his girlfriend is pissed. Well, you know, Marcus, I will give him this credit where credit is due. Marcus is very smart. He was very, he was very observant. He knew to keep eyes on certain things. He was watchful of certain things. Um, he obviously um, has a quality about him that appears trustworthy because people valued his opinion. They trusted him. He's got this influence. But the one thing he wasn't smart about was keeping the information that he had to himself. And that's the difference between it's a rookie move and he's playing with vets. And so because he played that rookie move on Dan, Dan is the one who made that decision to get rid of Marcus. Phaedra didn't need to get rid of Marcus. Neither did Parvati. But Dan has now murdered two people who are threatening his game. His game. Right. Yeah. And, and it's but I think I think hands are clean at the end. Yes. You know? And I think she noticed. I think she's picking up on that. And I think we see that throughout the episode. She picks up on that. And I think they're going to be, the ladies are going to be on top of him now on how he's trying to make certain things to go his way and whatnot so i think it's um, normal for parvati to feel like she um doesn't necessarily have a strong voice in the murders yet because she's new and she's very smart too she's like not that she doesn't have a voice she's just choosing not to exert her voice right now because she's observing how these traders are playing how they've been playing and she's trying to feel her way in with them um so before the mission, there is some conversation. Uh, Trishel is suspecting Dan of being a traitor because he was talking to Marcus and now Marcus is gone. Oh, is Trishel really? Yes. Sounds like she's hitting something on the head finally. Wow, I'm shocked. Uh, Deontay is suspicious of Max because he appears nervous. They were having a conversation, Dante. Um, Max and CT were having a conversation and Dante's like, who do you think it is? And Max is like, I don't know, you know, because other than that, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't know. And he, he doesn't. And he doesn't. in his head, he's thinking that he's just going to keep quiet because yeah. he don't, he wants to be able to move around and see what's going on and then make his decision from there. So Dante um, has come to the understanding with himself that, he is following his heart, and not his mind. If he is feeling it in his heart, that is the direction he's going. And we're going to see where that leads. Um, Janelle and Larsa are thinking that at least one traitor is a man because of the murders of Bananas and Marcus. Because what woman is... Needing to get rid of bananas and Marcus. Uh, now that you break it down like that, yeah, yeah, that that uh, yeah, I would think it's, the same thing. It's it has very, to be a it has got, to be a man, an egotistical man, <laughs> an egotistical man. Oh baby, we got it! Oh, the lions just out again. Touchdown, Muhammad! You take that. Lions 20, Rams 10. Just so you know where we are in our day. Yes. Yeah, so what happens after that? Let's get to the challenge. What happens? All right. That? So we're on our third mission. Yes. This is a mission. They're in a graveyard. There's a cemetery. They've got, um, they've got a, they've gotten hidden shields, but they also have to collect these gold bags or these bags of money. But there are these lights and if you get caught by a light, then you're eliminated from the game. 
And these there are two lights and they're motioning on the grounds of the cemetery. And they're, um, people are falling into these spotlights. Well, Bergie is figuring out that these lights are on a pattern. And he's trying to tell everyone, hey, these lights are on a pattern if you go this way, but no one's really listening to Bergie. They've had, this is their third challenge. He wasn't really significant in the first two. Yeah. He, he's trying to exert, like, I, I have a strategy, I have a plan. No I'm one's. Show you guys. Yeah. At some point, however, after several people, CT is trying to get a shield. CT gets out. Um, Phaedra, uh, not Phaedra, Sheree, Sheree gets out. Um, there are people who are playing hard and that have been instrumental in each challenge that are getting eliminated from this mission. And then they somehow start listening to Bergie. Yeah, I think after Bergie like yelling and explaining over yeah. and over again, I think it just got to the point where it's like we have to listen to it because now all these people are going out. Because we don't have like, any other strategy. Listen to me. Yeah. We don't have no other strategy. Bergie's the only one who's trying to tell us we gotta go with it. And if he's if he's wrong or sabotage it, I mean it's also a plan to go, well, Bergie, you sabotaged us. You told us to listen and blame it on reason. someone. You got somebody to blame. Blame it, it on somebody, because yeah. that's what this game is all about. Um I will say this, watching him look for this hammer and trying to figure out, like, where this light was going was giving me, like, so much, like, I, I couldn't even anxiety, keep up. Huh? Cause the anxiety, I didn't know what was happening, what was yeah. going on. But what I do know is that Janelle has decided to sign up for the WWE, and um, I cannot wait to see her in the future WWE match <laughs> at this point. Well, and, why would you uh, say I, I think... that? <laughs> I just want to say, I'm waiting for Janelle. Janelle needs to be on the challenge at this point. Because she, like, she wants to tuffle. And she's a tough, she is a tough mom, a tough woman. And I want to see her drag you some of these. Tussle? I want to see her well, tussle. What I, I think and I what, saw Janelle. Let's talk about it. I let's think, talk about it. I think I saw Janelle get there first. I think I saw Janelle get there first. And, and then she's we saw... reaching along in here looking for her shield. And then here comes. It is it Ekin Sue? Is that who did that? It's Ekin Sue. Okay. Ekin Sue comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And Ekin Sue just kind of leans on her shoulder and then goes for it. Yeah. I hate the narrative that Ekin Sue and then other people are trying to put on Janelle because Janelle was there first, well, reaching in there that's, first. That's a hey, that's game. Ekin Sue said, I'm going to blame you before you can blame me. If I blame you first, if I tell my story first, that's the story people know. And then you have to come and change their minds. Damn, you're right about that. Um, after them for a while, they finally figure it out. You know, there's a couple people left. They did get some of the money. Mm -hmm. They did get a big chunk, which yeah. was great. Uh, the only people that got a shield, I think, was Janelle. And uh, who else got a shield? I can't remember. Do you remember who got a shield? I only have that Janelle has Janelle. a shield. but So it might just be Janelle, to mm. be honest. I don't know if anybody else got a shield. Let me think. I think there was one more person with a shield, but I can't remember. It was remember. definitely a guy. Mm. It definitely was a guy. Okay. I can't remember. But, yes, two people got shields. I don't think nobody got the third one. Yeah. Um, you know, they get back to the castle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, they did win a lot of money, which is great. What happens next, Tiff? Well... They have this round table. And this round table is a very chaotic round table. You got Dante I... calling out Max, San Sandra calling out Max, Max calling out Janelle and Ekin Sue, CT calling out Max, Larsa calling out Dan, mm. and legitimately so, saying that he does not speak up. Dan doesn't say much to defend himself. Um, and Parvati is like, wow, they're calling out Dan, but I'm not really ready to mm -hmm. call out Dan, so I'm going to mm -hmm. sit tight. Uh, mm -hmm. Sheree calls out Janelle as a traitor or mm. a really selfish player. Mm. And then MJ calls out Dan. Yes. So, so, so there's two people that are like, yeah, they're they are they're suspicious to him. They are suspicious to him, and um, this goes on for some time. In it, Deontay calling out Max, he paints 
a beautiful picture of guilt. Crazy, beautiful. He should Canvas. have. He could have been a prosecutor in the courtroom. He says, "You are very charming and very smart, and this way about you is that way of a traitor. I see it. I know it in my heart. I." You can't, and these are my words. You can't convince me otherwise. I can look into this is how, your, this is how it went. Though, yeah, so it's it's very it's the it energy. Fully. It's the energy that he's yes. giving. I, you are my friend. You couldn't look me in the eye. You couldn't meet me eye to eye. I asked you a question. You're you you're you're changing the way that you move. I don't trust you. I know you're a traitor. I know a traitor when I see one. And here comes CT joining in too. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, I saw you. I looked at you. I don't trust you. You moving around here acting sneaky. So, you know, Max, it's, it's, it's going to be me. It's going to, I'm going to get you before you get me, you know. Damn, oh my God. I can't. This is hilarious. So, yeah, so we, we're at this table. <clears throat> um, Max tries to defend himself but max kind of also kind of goes off of bringing up like how we did the last round table and max is not a you know which is okay max he, is not a, a strategist yeah so he max is like yeah he deflects and then he's like i mean i, I don't know what to tell you guys like he's he just kind of like he throws it on to he throws it back to janelle and ek and sue i will say does. this you know it's it's like uh <laughs> I don't know if this comes with age or maturity. I'm not sure. Or just like lifestyle, but it's almost like when you don't have time for the pettiness, you don't give it much attention. It's like, yeah, whatever. And, but when you're playing a game, you can't be so cavalier as to be you like, can't. I'm not about to pay this any attention. So he's kind of like, I know I'm not a traitor. Y'all sound real dumb. Let's put let's let's pay attention to what's going on here. Let's look at some mm. other scenarios that possibly could be um, traitor, mm -hmm. more traitor like than than me. I'm not a traitor mm -hmm. at all. But mm -hmm. in a game, you have to be convincing. It's not real life where you can be like, oh, OK, you think I'm lying. Go on over there and think I'm lying. in. I really don't care what you think. You can't not care what people think. This isn't the game Correct. for that. And so Mark Correct. does not um, give them, you know, he's trying to rationalize with them that we have we have nothing to lay claim to be factual about me uh, there's not even any real suspicion around me being a traitor like honestly if you think about it why would max kill bananas and marcus i mean I'm, uh, let me tell you something this, this this is i love this group of people because they are just all over the place they can't come up with the actual factual or try to come down to the table because let me tell you some tip if i was at this table i'm gonna be honest not the lions. If I was at this table, and um, <laughs> that looked like the other team got a touchdown. Um, if I was at this table, straight up, I'm gonna be honest. I'm call. I'm. I'm gonna be a heavy hitter. You know, I love calling people out. I'm gonna say, it is either we need to make a decision. It, it is either Dan, Janelle, CT, Sandra. Is or, that what you're um, gonna do? That's what you Hold do. Hold on. I would say that at the table to mm -hmm. now it's five people. Who else has been on TV for a while in competition? Who else am I missing? I don't know where you're uh, going, but yeah, keep going. Okay, you're just going to call. This. You're going to do a take attendance. You're going to call out everybody. Hold on. Not even, not take attendance, <laughs> but in reality, if we, we've seen traders already, right? If these people are coming into this game, ready to play a game, we know that Allen's going to pick somebody who's been on TV for a while. One of the traders is somebody that's been on TV for a while. That's just what it is. So I would have sat there and said, we need to get it down to these are the five people. We've already messed up with Peppermint. We need to figure out out of these five people, who do we want to send home? Straight up. Straight to get right to the point. And then let's have a discussion. I do, I do, let the, I do understand that. But I'm then just if, saying uh, in reality. That, just, and, but in reality... Mm -hmm. If you're calling out one of those people who you're saying is definitely a traitor, 
Of course, they're going to kill me. Right. So would you actually... But I'm... I'm, Baby, I'm getting shield next. I'm I'm only doing this if I have a shield. Let me make that clear. Okay. (laughs) All right. Now, the end result of this roundtable vote is that Max gets banished. And like all banished house guests, they have to stand in the front and reveal whether they are a traitor or faithful. And Max reveals... That he is a faithful, which sends everyone spiraling. Well, the best two reactions I saw were Dan and Phaedra's. They were the most dramatic <laughs> this time. Dan goes, "Oh no, oh my, he can't believe it," and Phaedra can't believe it either. Oh, you gotta be, ca- oh my, this is terrible. <laughs> I mean, they are just uh, un. Loved it. They can't believe it. And it sends Dante into a... Fo- like, you thought he had a breakdown before a little bit and yeah. upset? Yeah. Baby, this is he- this is on his conscience. Like, he... This is hard for him. This is, is not the type of environment. And he looked at, you know, Mark as his friend. He did. And, you know... And then this accused just, him. And then accused him. And, then and he now he looks... And he was wrong. Yeah. And now it's just like... They don't know what to do. And now, someone called him point, out. I forget who it was, but they they point out that Dante and Sandra were the most influ. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Dante and Sandra were the most influential over that vote of for Marcus in, in putting that target on him. And they were so wrong. And it's interesting uh, to me that as upset as Dante was about Peppermint, it's interesting that... He would he did present that. to be so sure about Max. Yeah. And th- I, I do think that he's going to think twice about how sure he is. But that is also uncomfortable because who wants to walk around unsure? Who wants to walk around unsure of what they think, unsure of their gut, unsure of what they feel? Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. game casts a lot of doubt mm-hmm. onto you about Am I right about my instincts, my gut, when I think that I know something? And he's honestly saying, I don't know if I can continue to do this. I am not surprised. I won't be surprised if he self evicts. I also wanted to say, Me either. I'm pretty sure that Larsa will probably aim her target directly at Dan because she's I was very just about to say adamant. That. Larsa and MJ. I think yeah. now that that happened, it looked like they looked at each other like. Mm-hmm. They are going to be on it. And Come on, get him. baby. And then what happens after all this, Tip? We get to Dante in the library having a breakdown. Yeah. Like, he just, it just broke his soul. And, it did. You know, everyone's kind of consoling him. Mm-hmm. But Phaedra, baby. Yeah. Phaedra, motherfucking parts. Phaedra is putting, she, she's putting it on because... Honestly, I oh, think she here, is. Baby. Yep, I, she is. They go. Let me tell you something. They better hope they don't find out she's a traitor, because that is going to hurt all of them. This is just. This is too good to be true. Well, you know, she's playing a really good role of support. And if I'm supporting you and I'm comforting you and I'm helping you, I'm rubbing your back, your shoulder, your head. I'm giving you a pillow, fluffing your pillow, bringing you a blanket, giving, turning on the heat for you, making sure you cozy. I could never be the person who is stabbing you in the back. It's impossible. So she's definitely impossible. doing a great job of shifting the target away from her by consoling Dante and his time of need for yeah. feeling terrible and guilty about what he did, you know, or, and, and I say what he did because he pretty much led that train down those tracks. No, he led that train. Even Janelle was like, I was so convinced. And yeah. Janelle's like, I don't normally get convinced. Yeah. I was so convinced. Yeah. He was and very convinced. That's just the power. That's just the power of the passion and how he went behind it. Um, then we cut to this interesting thing that happens, Tiff. And what happens? Cause this is crazy. Well, it's time for the traitors to kill again. However, they're going to murder in plain sight this time. And so the game is getting a little tricky for them. They don't get to hide behind their cloaks in the uh, around this pit and make a decision and put a letter underneath someone's door and you're dead. This time, they have to play this game of getting the chalice 
from the library and giving it or having the person who drinks from this chalice is the person who's going to be murdered and they have to do it in front of everyone. And Dan and Parvati become the masterminds of this strategy. And Phaedra goes, I ain't got nothing to do with I that. I am a, I, I am a Southern belle. I you guys do that not, for me. I'm not you doing do that. that. I am yep. just, I'm, yep. I'm trading places. On, I'm with yep. the faithfuls. <laughs> yes. Which like, I get the fact that the thing I like about this the most, she's not even getting her hands dirty. They're about to do yeah. it. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like, I'd be like, uh-uh, we all in this. Like, get your ass up. Like, that's crazy. So the trade... Mm, go ahead. Go ahead. No, please continue. So the traders have to get this chalice from a magic book. They have to give the chalice to someone in plain sight. Parvati goes into a room that has a group of people. And she's looking at John. And she's wavering if she's going to give this chalice to John and for some reason she ends up over by Sheree and decides I think I'm going to give it to Sheree because remember Dan did mention about them getting rid of Sheree yeah and Sheree was an Phaedra's option like no nah, no nah. Phaedra is sitting there going now wait a minute looking at her looking at her wishing I, she would and she says like I'm not it doesn't matter whatever terms we were on, have been on. Like, I I know I know this young woman. She's not going to die on my watch. My watch, yeah. I agree and with so that. she must, Poverty must have felt that energy from Phaedra because as, as low-key as Phaedra is playing, she baby, that this. energy was radiating. She gave her that look. She said. She said and held it, okay? Yeah, you'll be dead Wait. next. Yeah, because you'll be dead, Yes. <laughs> So Parvati moves on along to another room with the group of people where MJ is because MJ was another option because MJ has called out Dan. And so MJ is an option and she goes and she stands next to she, M to Bergie. She also looks at Bergie too. Oh, she is. No. Oh my God. Not Bergie. Um, the bachelor. That's the, Peter. Uh, Peter. Yeah. Peter. Not the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, good job, Derek. <laughs> and so she's standing next to MJ and she's like, there is no way I am going to get MJ to wrap her lips around this dusty, dirty, old, rusty, fucking rusty cup. cup at all. And so she's trying to figure out, like, what is my strategy? How am I going to convince MJ to drink from this rusty cup? And she's on and time's ticking. She's on very borrowed time. So she ends up setting her sight on who she feels is possibly an easier victim. But who? We don't know. We don't know That's who that so is. Uh, I don't know. My thing is this. I want to point out two things. Peter and uh, what's his name? Who's the actor? Kevin. Kevin decided they were going to come up with a plan that they were not, they were going to target each other. So then they it looks like each the other's name to keep at the them home. around. Yeah. I thought that was pointless. Throw that out. It is pointless. Uh, I don't know why. Don't ever in your crooked mind decide that you want to paint a fake target on me. Right. Okay. Because you lost your mind. You did. You really I told you mind. it was crooked. They, you could tell both of them two never played a competition show. Because I was like, what the hell are they talking about? Now, um, I want to take some guesses. If I'm correct of mm -hmm. how she was moving, mm -hmm. the only people that are that way is Peter. She did it. And Sandra was in that room, I don't think. Or was she? Yes. I don't think she's getting Sandra. I don't think she wants Sandra to go out that way. I think Sandra she wants to get is Sandra. in that room. I don't, but I don't think Sandra's. I don't think she was getting Sandra to do that. I'll be shocked, I'll, girl. I'll be shook off if she I'm, got Sandra. I'm very. I, Who do I you am think it is? I don't know. I'm almost just as interested in how she gets someone to drink out of it because I can't imagine why I would put my mouth on that glass. 
It would have to be like a, a dare or something. But guess what? Now you're giving yourself away because uh, now when they make the announcement of so and so's been eliminated because they drank out of a poison cup or only something. Only thing I was thinking is if I'm like, does this taste funny to you? And then maybe you mm. taste it for me. Like, yeah. Okay, shut up. Don't, don't, don't tell nobody that. <laughs> 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 we might need to use that. Don't tell nobody that. <laughs> well,. That's how episode three ends. We are left on a cliffhanger to find out yeah. who actually will be murdered at the hand of Parvati and her chalice until the next episode. But we thank you for tuning in. We thank you for yeah, being in our I'm live chat. Hard. Thanks for joining us. Uh, drop in the chat who you think um, it's going it to be. It's interesting. And new episodes come on Thursday, if I'm correct, at 9 p.m., if I am correct. I feel like I'm correct, because that's what I saw when I clicked on uh -oh. the little thing I'm watching right now on Peacock. I'm kind of, uh, I wish I had the names of everybody who was in that room, but I don't. Yeah, new episodes Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. All right, so we'll be back. Yes. Have a nice right, day, guys. guys. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.